Steve Rat is easy. Soccer. What the fuck? Dude, I can't take this lady on the thing. We can bet on that too. What's the odds? Welcome, welcome, welcome back. It's insane. Welcome back to what's the odds? Welcome. I'm very smart. Welcome back to what's the odds? The odds. Welcome. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to What's the Odds with Steve Ren is easy. It is me. I am back. Uh, March 27th, 2019. It is uh, the last Wednesday in March. Uh, and I'm joined again by my friend, Bretton Biddlecombe, hey who is back from the road. Yeah. And uh, back from uh, uh, Juice and the Wheeze. Mm -hmm. Wheeze and the Juice. Wheeze and the Juices. And uh, and and talking to the people and telling the jokes in the Midwest, buddy, right? It was great. And you told me that on the way in, you were very disappointed when you first walked in the door. I haven't seen you in a while. We did talk. I asked if you were going to be here, but I wanted to make sure uh, because I wanted to see you. And then you were disappointed when you walked in. Why? These are these are his words. I wasn't disappointed. You were very disappointed from what I, was I heard. Not disappointed. What are you talking about? Well, everyone not. Every People were coming in and going, hey, man, I can't wait to see you in the anteater costume today. Yeah, they all thought you were going to dress up like an anteater. No, no. they what? Okay. Okay. They all thought I was going to dress up like an anteater. So uh, I'm going to assume that everyone here, you know, probably doesn't have time to listen to the no, podcast no, they all, every they single No, no. They all watch week. every week. They're they watching right now. Maybe they do. Maybe they don't. But why else would they think that, that I was going to dress up like an anteater? Why else would do you think people would think that I was going to dress up like an anteater? Because you see Irvine won. The first game. First game, right? Yeah. Yes, that's what you thought, right? Yes. And again, this is going to go back to what I've spoken about. Uh, I've had Christian Harloff speak about this before. Um, the job that I've asked you to do as bookkeeper, you look very busy. You've got phones and computers and notepads in front of you. Um, the only thing I, I said, I said, that I'm not great at keeping sort of the score and making sure the notes are all. In, so can you do that? No problem. And then you come in telling everyone today in the All Things Comedy Studio that I have to come in wearing an anteater costume because why? Of course, you thought that I lost the bet. But let's go back to the videotape and review exactly last week's podcast, which if correct me if I'm wrong, just so that I'm before we start. This is all this is uh you in the computer, right? You're up there, and and that's me. That might be and me. And that's Jeff. I don't Dennis, know. That doesn't right? really look like me. Okay, good. Let's go. Jesus, oh my God. riding this the youthy anteaters, <laughs> riding his anteaters <laughs> all the way. Okay, baby. riding the wave. I'll tell you what. If Man. if if the anteaters make it to the Sweet Sixteen, I will dress like an anteater. I'll get an anteater costume and I'll wear it on this fucking <laughs> podcast. Okay, I'll make you a deal. That's just a me giving you. Now. Now. I asked you also how your weekend was with Paulie. I know you were busy, so I know you didn't get in a lot of opportunities to watch many games. You mm -hmm. did tell me that, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm going to assume that you, you know, maybe missed a couple games, but I, I don't know why you think what 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 your thought process was as to say there's a 64 team tournament. Okay, my team won one team one game, lost the second game. And now I, they're in the the Sweet Sixteen, like, or did you not listen to what I said, or do? You Steve, I thought you were a fun guy. You were going to show up in a costume. We were going to have some laughs. Of course I would have. Do you understand how badly I was sweating? My entire family, my entire family. I got my wife googling my what? Okay, I watched a lot of games this weekend. Yeah, I watched a ton of games. And for those of you, I thought these games this weekend were great. I mean, if you watch that Duke game on Sunday, was worth the entire whatever you. Whatever these kids don't get paid. That was the one-point game, right? The one-point game, which, I mean, I'll pull up the video. I got it over here in a little bit. But uh, it's just unbelievable how that ball tipped off. But I did watch. Um, I was in uh, Indianapolis. By the way, thank you to everyone who came up to the beautiful Helium Comedy Club in Indianapolis. Our battery's running low. Well, that's okay. Um, and so uh, thank you to everyone who came out to the Indianapolis uh, Helium. It's a beautiful new comedy club downtown. Uh, and so I'm watching the games. I'm in a hotel, dude. This is best case scenario for me. Mm -hmm. So I'm in a hotel. I'm watching games. Uh, I'm in the green room. I'm watching games. When I'm not telling jokes, I'm watching games. So it's great. It's good to go. So I did sweat out. I, I first of all, I watched the first. You did you have any idea 
because we did talk about it in the that that uh, Irvine had won seventeen games in a row. This is that was I had all, no, no idea, none of that, no idea. So picking them, but knowing a, that they got in, I knew they they had to have some kind of momentum. Well, yeah, I mean, seventeen games in a row, a thirty and five record. You're gonna get into the tournament now. Yeah. I I feel like this is a thirteen five thirteen four matchup. Now, I did if you remember, I said I love twelve five matchups. 13-4, not a fan of. I love 12-5 matchups. And you, you were right on... On all four of them. Yeah. All four 12-5 matchups, which, by the way, which included a 12 beating a 5, Liberty, which yep. everyone made fun of me, uh, but I, won I their also, first round game. Also took Liberty. Okay. Jeff made fun of me. Uh, Murray State over Florida, a 12-5. I picked Murray State, right? 12-5 over here. Oregon, Wisconsin. I picked the twelve again. Took Wisconsin, and the twelve five over here. Auburn, New Mexico. I took the right five there. So, I got the twelve five matchups on lock. It's the thirteen fours that I now have to look at going forward, and that's where my weakness came in. I did not see the UC Irvine Anteaters uh, in the first round beating Kansas State, and um, and thank God. Thank goodness for Oregon. for Oregon, the <laughs> Oregon Ducks, which I have got great friends that went to Oregon and uh, they're wonderful people. They've got wonderful kids. And I'll tell you what, I, I watch Oregon games. I watch their baseball games. I'm a fan of Luke List, the uh, the golfer, who and we'll get to in a minute. You're just going to buy Nikes forever. From no, here I'm on a out, fan of the Oregon. Now, all look, they're all Nikes. filthy. They're all filthy. They're every single – or every any single – any major college, which we're all gonna, we are all finding out internally, sports programs, they're all well, yeah. filthy. They're all business enterprises. But you got, if you're gonna send your kids somewhere, and you got kids, and you want to send them somewhere, and maybe you shouldn't, but let's, that's an, a, an argument for later on. I like Oregon. I like the area. I like, the, I like what I see so far. Anyway, that being said, I rooted hard. And did you watch that game? No, uh, I no, saw didn't. the score. At you saw the score, and then uh, Cassie texted me and said, "Oh, they're going to lose." Well, it, they were not. For they were down. Uh, I mean, they I, they were down. They were up in the first half, a decent amount, eight, six, seven here and there, and then they, they just would not go away, Irvine, and they they tied it up, and then they even went up in the second half, and I'm going, "This is it." Now the entire family. Is laughing at me, my sons. Where are we gonna get an anteater costume? My wife goes, we can. She goes, I found an Alf costume, that'll work. I go, are you nuts? You think an Alf costume? I'm on Amazon right now. There's no anteater costumes. No, and I googled, uh, I googled um, like like shops, like you know, because now I'm thinking it's gonna be like eyes wide shut. I gotta get this anteater costume because. On Sunday, I came home from Buffalo. Mm -hmm. I'm watching the games, right? Oh, you're going to Buffalo. No, I'm sorry. From Indianapolis. Yeah. Both Heliums. I'm going to Buffalo this weekend. But I came home, and uh, and so... Who was at your game, by the way? There was a pacer there, right? Yes. My man. You got a name drop. My man. Fucking name drop. Dude, this kid, first of all, I, I go, hey, man, how, how you doing? He's like, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And so he's, I think he's 22 years old. Um, how tall was he? Dude, look at this kid. Six eleven, right? Six eleven. Yeah, uh, he's a place for the Pacers. He graduated he's from UCLA. A foot and a half taller than me. Yeah, his name's T.J. Leaf, and he was awesome, dude. He came. Uh, we did some pictures together because he came to the first show, did an autograph signing with me. You know, drum up some. It's a brand new comedy club. It's for a second week, yeah. so let's get some business. We're in a mall, so let's get some How people over room? here. Nice. You know, those rooms are all great. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to give it to Mark Grossman over at Helium. He builds a nice room and gets everyone, you know, together. And, you know, they figure out, you know, new, you know, new rooms, waitresses, everyone's sort of new. So they figure it out. But, yeah. I'm playing the nice Helium. I'm playing the Econo Lodge. Oh, really? The freeway. It was maybe the best gig I've ever done with him, though. That's where you were? Evansville, Indiana. I want to go to Evansville, Indiana. The Econo Lodge. It was in a conference room of this like meth motel. That's the birthplace of Don Manley, if I believe. It was fucking awesome. Whole town came out. Ohio was yeah. great. Ohio was all like funny bones, so they were really nice yeah. rooms. Those um, funny you, bones you are beautiful. You played them all, right? Yeah. I, yeah well, I did Toledo nice. and uh, Dayton. 
Columbus. In Columbus, yeah. 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 All great, but we did that one was just kind of like an added on show mm -hmm. and it was it was so much fun. Which Omaha? I did did you do Omaha? Or was that Sebraska? I did Omaha with Paulie. The funny bone. Years ago. Many, many, many years ago. Yeah. Long, long time. We were still wheezing the juice though, bro. <laughs> By the way, does this would this have passed for a No. It's not an anteater. <laughs> Is that an ante? Pull I mean, up what an anteater actually looks like. I get. It's not Elf. Elf's an alien. No, I don't want to close all the tabs. I don't want to close all the tabs. Anteater. Images. Not even close. Dude, if you're going to. No. Bam. No. Look at the nose. No. Brenton, look at the nose. That's like, Alf is like if an anteater was on the real housewives of anteaters and got a bunch of plastic surgery. That's what Alf is. That's not a good profile shot, but I mean, it's pretty close. No. Come on. Yeah, but- Alf's had a lot of work done. Did you see any uh, anteater options up there or no? <laughs> I can't find anything. Congratulations to the- uh, You'd have to make it yourself. You, would, you literally, if you had lost that game, you would have had to come in with a makeshift costume, big snout. And now I got the kids all day yesterday because my wife, uh, on, on Monday, because my wife went, she went overnight with a couple of friends. Um, and so I'm like, oh, thank God. I didn't have to go running around looking for an anteater costume. Thank you to the Oregon Ducks. And one day maybe uh, one of my boys or both of them will be heading over to, uh, to Eugene, Oregon, to either play or attend the University of Oregon. Uh, and I thank you for me not having to wear, although, you know, I look good in costumes. It would have been fun. Uh, Maybe we can make a bet and someone will wear a costume oh, next week. By the way, we let have. me pull up since we're here. Let me pull up this this unbelievable, um, where's YouTube again? There it is. Uh, this This Duke, UCF, this game was unbelievable. It just, I mean, th the end. Did you see the end of this game with a tip? Mm -hmm. How how close it came. How close everyone's bracket came to being busted. I mean, pretty much. And by the way, ESPN said that um, I think on day one, two, two and a half, everyone's brackets were were done. Like there was one out of 17.2 million, there was one perfect bracket left. And I think when Kans, I don't can't remember what the game that busted it, but basically it was just, that was it. Yeah, no was, more perfect brackets. I think mine was done after the first game. Well, I mean, I picked St. John's. And then when, as soon as I posted my, my brackets online, thank you to everyone who, uh, who, you know, I, I, I wanted to you know, get a little conversation going, you know, people, but everyone's like, St. John's didn't make it in. Yes, I understand that. I, I know I posted the day after, but I made it the day before. Got it? And I still believed in my St. John's. <laughs> Redman. That's what I still call them. They're not the Redman. Anyway, Sounds this like is in the video. Sounds like you could have used a producer on the show that could have told you St. John's was out. Well, you know, I knew I was. Th we did the show the day of the playing <laughs> game while it was happening. Yeah. While it was going on. It's not so an anteater. It's not an anteater. Um, th but that game, th that game was really Zion Williamson. It's so exciting to watch, but dude, they, they, that um, taco kid on on Central Florida, the seven foot six kid. I mean, you you could. He's lanky, obviously not 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 like athletic the way it is interesting to watch Zion Williamson. But like, it's insane to watch a dude at seven six play basketball. I mean, we watched Manu Bowl do it at like seven two seven three, but like seven six, the guy didn't even have to jump. He doesn't even have to literally jump to it's put it in the fair. net. He grabs it like it's insane. And just trying to get a shot around him, it's it's I mean, you there's a lot of things you can teach, but you can't teach seven foot six, mm -hmm. obviously. I mean, he uh, what, what what would he he would he would just pick you up, Brenton, and walk you around. He's two feet taller. Se <laughs> Literally two feet taller than me. <laughs> yeah. Taco Ball, uh, Taco, I think his bowl or whatever his last name is. No, I'm thinking of Bowl Bowl. Um, man, seven foot six. That's stupid. Um, yeah, that Duke. Uh, but I'm not gonna have knee problems when I'm 40. That Duke Florida team, Central Florida game was the game of the weekend in my estimation. Um, as far as our brackets are concerned, my bracket, uh, I got uh, I got 
uh, 14 and 12 is 26 points for the first round. And I got 24 points in the second round. Jeff Danis got uh, 23 points in the first round and 24 points in the second round. I've got 49 points altogether. Really? Yeah. You're beating Jeff? Let me see your brackets. Where, where do you... Bro. You see Irvine, dude. He did pick Liberty. He picked Belmont? Picked Belmont. Well, they lost. Yeah. Um, you got excited. I know. I, just, <laughs> I don't remember you. I thought I would have. Did I make fun of you? I'm Probably. Sure did, yeah. You made fun of me on every. I picked Michigan State. You made fun of me. It doesn't this matter who I take. Oh, you do have. I made some good picks not knowing anything. Let that be a lesson. You bet blind. I took Buffalo. Even though they lost to Texas Tech, I took them twice, but um, they killed Arizona State. Uh, did you know the uh, head coach of Buffalo was coaching high school basketball in Michigan a couple of years ago? And I guess he he's just like this genius, and he, he won a couple of state championships, went to Buffalo. Really? And uh, he's been there three years now, I think. And they didn't make the tournament the first year, but the last two years they've made the tournament, and they're a powerhouse. Damn. So Buffalo's going to be good for a while or until he uh, – whatever team he goes to. I know Bobby Hurley was the coach of Arizona State when they played Buffalo in the first round. They beat, uh, they lost to him, but um, yeah, b- yeah I'm that's not, where I'm he not came doing from, that Bobby bad. Hurley. I'm not doing bad. As far as um, against the odds are concerned, uh, my friend Kent, Kent Brown, uh, sent me a text saying that ended up the first rounds, 23 favorites covered, 24 underdogs covered, and one push. 24 overs, 23 unders, one push. It's a virtual coin flip. Can you believe that? It's crazy. Out of all those games to call, they basically evened out everything perfectly with the odds. It's insane. Um, I know the Duke didn't cover. I know they were the biggest, I think, favorite in the first round uh, against North Dakota State, and they did not cover. That game was interesting, too, because they were actually down the first half at some point. Um I'm looking forward to uh, this weekend, starting tomorrow. To, uh, where are the brackets? Starting tomorrow, we got, um, well, it's tomorrow the 28th. Virginia and Oregon. Virginia and Oregon. And Purdue and Tennessee. That'll be a good game. I took Purdue over Villanova. I had someone shitting on me on Instagram saying, oh, you're taking Villanova. They're knocked out after the first round. Yeah, they're fucking knocked out because the Big Ten's good. Uh, I'm going to take uh, the Vols over Purdue, obviously. I think um, – let me see what the lines are. On yeah, these, I took uh, Tennessee over Purdue as well. And then on Friday, we've got uh, LSU and Michigan State. I got Michigan State moving on. Michigan State um, – oof. I mean, some of the powerhouses – I love the parity, in the, obviously, in, which is now in the first round. There is I mean, There are no more blowouts. There are no – I mean, the games in, on Sunday afternoon, there were – or I think it was Sunday or Saturday afternoon, there were a couple, like, 10-point games. But as far as the games on, on Thursday – on Wednesday, Thursdays and Fridays, they were really just compelling games. And so um, – Michigan State looked okay, but not unbeatable. Obviously, Duke had its issues. Um, first, I'll do. Uh, I mean, I, look, I I like Michigan State going to the Final Four. So, um, I mean, um, going so to you thought Duke. Michigan State looked okay in a game they won by twenty. There were times though where, but maybe it's because their opponent wasn't. You know, it was even against close. the Bradley game. Yeah, it was the first round game that I really. Uh. Um, yeah, the Minnesota game I didn't see. The Bradley game is the one I was like, "Ooh, this is a, uh, this is a lot closer than than people anticipated." Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I almost took Yale. I'm glad I didn't. Yeah, holds off Bradley. Um, yeah, I think I, uh, you know, Michigan State will 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 take it to. Uh, I did see Tom Izzo's flip out though. Oh yeah, and people are defending it. him. I like, I like it. Hey, what are you gonna do? That's is... how he. That's who he's been forever. 
You know that if you're letting your kid go to school there. They know that if they're going there to play for him, Here's you're going to get I yelled at. at. The kid had no problem with it. Yeah, he didn't. His parents have no problem with it. So everyone else should shut the fuck up. That's it. It's not my issue. Mm-hmm. What am I sticking my, you know? Yeah. No, it's not he a situation where it's Bob Knight, where it's like, yeah. you can tell these kids are, are petrified and, you know, they're writing anonymous letters. Mm-hmm. This is behavior, no, no, you know, that we all witnessed, and it's in the heat of the moment. What do you think? What, 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 how do you think these guys talk? And to he each responded other? to it. He responded to it, and they went out and they they kicked ass. It's not like the kid folded up and started crying and, and yeah. quit. He fucking went out and he played. Of course he did, because he'd been, he been he wants he to, was coached. He, he wants to to not make the same mistakes he's he's made before. Mm-hmm. Um, I have no problem with that stuff at all. I mean, look, there's a, there's a line and, you know, watching it's not the most fun thing in the world. You know, it's like, oh shit. You know, as you're, as you're watching a kid get berated, you're like, oh fuck. But you know, it's like, Hey, that's, I, I mean, I've seen people get yelled at at work. Yeah. You know, not in the same manner of like in your face or screaming, but yeah, I mean, maybe like in, in high pressure jobs. Fuck yeah, dude. But it's like, who are you to sit here and judge? Nobody tries to scream at drill sergeants for doing the same thing. I wouldn't know about that, bro. That stuff. I mean, but, I don't. I mean, that's. I don't know what goes on in the dark shadows there, bro. I guarantee you, there's nobody on Twitter going every drill sergeant should be fired for screaming at these recruits and and treating them like crap. Are soldiers allowed to have like Twitters and Instagrams and stuff? I have no idea. Maybe, but I, they're probably not allowed to so, use right? them. If they're like on duty, they're probably not allowed on there. Yeah, Google. you can't like tweet if you're. Yeah, you can't tweet. Hey, I'm here. Yeah, hanging in Kabul. Yeah. Um. Chilling in Kabul. 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 I'm really bad today when it comes to pronunciations. Really, really bad, dude. Um, I watched that show Action on Showtime. I told you to watch it. For those of you who haven't checked the show out, um, it's a pretty good show. I watched the first episode. Here's the trailer. Uh, Let me find it. There it is. Let me plug this back into here. Um, Hey, you heard about our caller last last week, right? Yeah. Okay. I uh, didn't get to listen to it because I had to be put on hold in order for you guys to take the call. Oh, it was great, dude. Ryan from Santa Monica. Big Bachelor fan, right? Huge, well, fans of watching us shit all over it. All right, this is the trailer. Check it out. Oh, put that on. Bingo. Legalizing sports gambling now. Might as well legalize cocaine and crystal meth. No problem. Exactly, and tax it. Done. Are you addicted to gambling? No. This guy was great. I'm addicted to making money. Sports betting just went legal. It's huge. This isn't a Vegas thing anymore. This is a national thing. New Jerseyans are very, very excited. New Jerseyans. Any given weekend, I may have a million dollars in volume. You'll wager a million dollars? Of course. I'm not playing it's to enjoy myself. Crazy. I'm playing to put well, on my table and take care of my family. I don't take the favorites. I take the long shots. This Royals, guy. Broncos, Misha Tate, five million dollar run. It's never been done. I broke the books in Vegas, and that's when Vegas banned me. The idea is to live to bet another day, not to blow your entire bankroll. You can certainly really destroy your life pretty good with gambling. Okay, this is a disaster. Gee, you think? In 2018, the American people lost 118 billion dollars to government sanctioned gambling. Haters only hate on winners. There's no one like me. You have that vision and a big set of fucking balls. If we bring it into the light, that's going to be better for everybody. This is the most obvious thing of all time. Sports betting, collectively, oh. all 50 states, it's billions of dollars. From here, it just continues to get better. I could just watch a live feed of the loss, of the sports book. Loss, loss, win, worth it. She's eleven. <laughs> Watching it, it made me really want to go to Vegas. 
Yeah. I got excited. Kind I of. I hate Vegas. It made me want to go to Vegas. I mean, yeah. I mean, look, it's. I just like the aspect of like, hey, everything's out of the shadows now. They had a guy on there that does a legal bookie still. He's an illegal bookie. He, he says his business has not been affected whatsoever. And he said the real reason I was thinking like, how could it not be because they offer a line of credit? Now, look, you know what credit comes with. We had Bartnick on the uh, yeah on the on the podcast. Um, I don't know how much you want to go out on the line for with you know people that are willing to give you credit, but yeah, I I, don't, I mean, I think the fact that everyone's now talking about it, it's legal everywhere, pretty much everywhere. It'll soon be legal everywhere. You can get to it very assess, uh, it's crazy easily. Though. They were saying five hundred billion dollars last year. Yeah. Five hundred billion and six or six to twelve in one day on one in one game on the Super Bowl Sunday, right? Yeah, yeah. one game. So, I mean, I don't know. Uh, look, that's not the only par- purpose of this episode of this podcast, but it is like just something that you know, obviously, we're super uh, into. So, um, I just I watched the first episode of that show. The, that Vegas Dave guy with the whole I can beat the the book seventy five percent of the time. That's I mean, I don't know. That's insane to well, me. Steve, let me see your bracket because I want to propose something. What? Because uh, we're both pretty. You're at fifty points right now, right? Yeah, 50 so we're points. we're both doing really good. We're basically we're doing really even. well. Um, it's okay. We're doing really well. Yep. Thank you. No problem. Just English. So it's our first language. I think uh, whoever wins this should have to dress up like an anteater. Dude. Okay. Whoever whoever doesn't win, whoever has the last less place, points, I gotta ask. I gotta clear it through Dan, Dan Jeff. I'm sure Jeff will. I'm do talking it. between you and me. I'm oh, not, you and I'm I? Not involving him. Well, what if we Jeff can figure comes. something out okay. else out with him? I'm just saying. I'm gonna make him put the anti Ricotta on. Well, that's fine if he comes in last because he's he's doing uh, it, now. Here's the, the worst. Ca- right now. here's the caveat though. Oh, caveat is that the right word to use? Caveat? Anyway. I don't want to look for the for the costume. I don't want to have to find it. I don't. We could easily find one in your size. We can go to a yeah. child store. We can go to a Toys R Us if they're still around. We can go to a you know um, a small like we can go to a circus and look for one of the small carnies that don't really. Um, I think you throw to... insults when you're nervous that you're going to lose. No, no, no. I think no. that's what's happening. Right I'm just now. saying there's mu- it's e- it's much more accessible you're to gonna, find your lose. anteater costume. You're going to lose. I don't know and where we're going to find one my size. Now, here's what I do have that could help us out a lot. I have a Chewbacca, a full Chewbacca to the neck. Now, I just need the anteater head and we'd be good to go. Yeah. That would be, I feel like that'd be fine. But for you, it would be a lot easier. I'll wear an anteater costume if you want to, if it's between you and I, which is 49. To, can I just see your bracket? I, 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 I haven't even looked at your bracket. I don't even know who you picked to win the whole thing. Uh, I took Michigan to win the whole thing. And you have Duke. You got North Carolina. All right. Because I just want to make sure I'm not like running into like we pick the same teams. No, we're we're pretty we were pretty similar the first round, I think. Okay. And then after that we kind of started to to move so off. You got Michigan State beating Duke. You got Michigan, so do I. I got North Carolina and I got Tennessee being Virginia. I mean, I'm gonna I'll take the bet. I'm going to take the bet. But I'm not as someone's confident. dressing up like an anteater. Yeah, and it's not even the dressing I've got, up. I've part. got instructions here how to make an anteater costume. That would be torture. Yeah, that would be real torture. You got to make the costume. You got to make the costume. Yeah, it's now a project. So it's now, not a bet; it's a project. Because now the next rounds were three points and. So look Thursdays. At look at this fucking guy. Can I send you this link? Thursdays games and Fridays games are three points apiece and four points. That's a points. fucking anteater costume. Dude, I, dude, I'll tell you what. That's crazy. I'll, can you just just show the that? How I can't pull it up on there. I don't even know how. I, I don't want to do it. I hate it. Yeah. Here. here, you do it. I'll type it in. Um, that would be torture to sit there and have to craft out an anteater costume. That requires hot glue. During the national championship. That require yeah. During the because yeah, the game's on Monday, I think. And the podcast would be Wednesday. And you gotta have that baby puppy ready to go. Um Oh my God. 
That would be terrible. Did I do that? No. I knocked it off because I, I knocked the thing off yeah, the back. I'm sorry, Em. I messed it up. It's all right. Don't worry about it. Um, hey, guys, we're taking phone calls, by the way. The phone number is 323-282-7424. Uh, uh, give us a shout if your brackets are uh, destroyed or you need help with a game you think you're not. I mean, it's already picked. But also give us some lines if you want to help with uh, – like I'll, I'll pull some lines for you guys, and uh, we'll pick some games if you want to actually bet on them with a spread. Did you uh, did you learn anything from watching that uh, documentary, the the sports thing? Yeah, I learned some of the terms, and now when I go to Vegas, I won't be an asshole going up to make a bet. I'll just say my number. I'll say my code I word, did, and I did, I'll fucking – Yeah, the number out. thing is weird, like saying like just the number. It makes sense, though. It's like ordering at a fast food restaurant. You don't say, I want a cheeseburger and fr medium fries and a drink. I want a number seven. Number seven. It's more efficient. Yeah, and also they do it at racetracks now. Uh, so yeah, that's the easier way to do it, but it's, yeah, not as intimidating watching the documentary. You really get to, I found it. Yeah. Well, it doesn't matter cause this thing's down. So well, I got it whenever it comes back. Beast cub creations. Now that's it's strictly for a furry fest, like a furry. Um, yeah. You have to be a full on furry. That's a furry. That's for like a, you know, a convention. Mm -hmm. mm. We're back. I don't know how we did it, but yeah. It's for furries, so God, that'd be terrible. I'm just gonna start googling it if I start to see games start going south for me this weekend. Um, uh, baseball season is tomorrow. I, I'm very excited, dude. The Yankees start. What time do they? Uh, open, uh, the, I think their games at one o'clock tomorrow. They open against the Baltimore Orioles. Who, speaking of. Um, uh, but I think they called him Vegas Dave on the show. Vegas Dave, the guy yeah. from Action. Who's he taking? He's well, he's the king of futures bets, according to him. You know, he picked. He was talking about he in the, the, in the Royals trailer. in 2015. The he Royals picked, in 2015. Uh, Ronda Rousey. The Broncos. Misha Tate over Ronda Rousey, I think, and then or Holly Holm Holly over, Holm Ra yep. over Rousey, and then and then he took the. Uh, um, who else did he? Uh, whatever the other big one he took. But, but he has the record for the largest payout on a UFC fight. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the ch the Vegas odds came out for you know winning the World Series. The Baltimore Orioles, who the Yankees opened uh, against tomorrow, two thousand to one. Two thousand. Let's look at these futures here. Uh, yeah. Baltimore Orioles. So why not bet a dollar on them? They got them here at one thousand to one because I guess the money came in yesterday. Certain sports books had them at two thousand to one, with people going in and betting twenty, twenty-five bucks. Because I mean, think about it. Yeah. Why uh, not a dollar? You win two thousand bucks. But today they have they have the Detroit Who Tigers. Who cares if just, you lose a dollar? Yeah, a uh, thousand to one. So yeah, I mean, hundred dollars win a hundred thousand uh, dollars. I like the Yankees coming in at six to one. I mean, these none of this makes really any any difference at the top because that's like splitting hairs with those those teams. Um, yeah, I mean to break down each to break down each um, division. I I feel like the the American League East this year is going to have three teams with 95 plus wins yeah that's my prediction I, agree with that. I don't know if that's ever been done before um to have a a division with three teams have 95 plus wins but i think you can have that this year in the american league east it's gonna be brutal really really brutal um I don't think the uh, Baltimore Orioles got any better in the off season, so you know I don't. I don't but then again, who knows? Uh, it could be their you know Tampa Bay Devil Rays year where they all just get together and they start to believe in each other and go on a run. But you know, one thousand to one odds doesn't say so. Uh, but I think that American League East is going to be nuts. Um, I think the Yankees. We'll pull it out with 101 wins. I think the Red Sox will win 100 games, and I think that the uh, Tampa Bay Devil Rays win 95 games. 
And so coming out of the American League, I got the Yankees winning their division, Red Sox winning the wild card. Um, in the Central, let's pull up the Central. All right. Alabama hires Buffalo's Oats as head coach. What's that, Brenton? What just happened? No. <laughs> Fat fingers happen again. Who's this? Oh, it's for basketball. This <laughs> is what I just was talking oh, about. Oh, Brenton. So next year, you heard it here first. Alabama's going to make the tournament. Alabama. Brenton was just talking uh, and gushing about the Buffalo, who he knows nothing about, but just heard. Well, I said he's going to probably go somewhere. Yep. And they're going to be good. So next year, Alabama, maybe it takes them two years, but within two years, they're going to be a tournament team and they're going to upset somebody. Well, they just had a, used to have a, a coach who coached in the NBA. So, but good for that guy, dude. Four years ago, he was coaching high school basketball. Yeah, dude. No, don't call on my phone. Don't call on my phone. Um, no, they, uh, man, that sucks. It sucks for Buffalo. Yeah, but, you know. That's the second coach to bounce in like three years for them. Well, they're not a powerhouse school. They're not going to be able to keep somebody. But the yeah, fact but that they're they trying keep, to be. They keep finding these people is, is fucking cool. Buffalo, dude. Nobody wants to go there. Nobody wants to hang out there. Antonio Brown, yeah, we want you, Buffalo. And then he goes, hey, fuck you. Yeah, but you don't want a guy like that. Um, Cleveland in the Central. Uh, I still like Cleveland. I still think they're uh, the team to beat out there. I think the White Sox got better. Um, and unfortunately for everyone, I think the Houston Astros. It's going to be a real big year for them as well. I think the Angels got better. Locking down Mike Trout, I think he's going to be happy playing out here, obviously, and just having that contract not be an issue for any more for the rest of his life. Um, and But, yeah, the Houston Astros, man, I don't see them at all becoming just coming down from the stratosphere. Right, so Seattle and Oakland, they already played two games. Was that over? That was in Japan. Okay. So they started that season over in Japan, like, I don't know, was it four days ago? Mm-hmm. And, yeah, they do that thing, and then they play two games for the fans over there. And then everyone's got to get time to come back. Just to no get one them excited, back. and then they come back here. And, and also they did a nice no thing for games. Ichiro Suzuki. They have, they, you know, he retired, basically. So, he's, you know, he signed a contract with the Mariners, went over there, played the games, and then retired. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he just stayed but or if he's coming back. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, that guy, talk about, I mean, talk about all-time – Probably the greatest hitter of all time. Argu- if he had played arguably, I an mean, entire career in Major League you, Baseball. You add them all up yeah. in two two leagues, which are, you know, one's considered 3,000 hits, and in, in the one that he got is remarkable. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's uh, top 100 per- hundredth of a percent to get up there. So you have that on top of 2,000-plus hits in Japan before you got here in, like, what was it? Six years, seven years, eight years, something ridiculous like that to get here. And then, and then throw another 3000 hits on top of it. The longevity, the cannon, the defensive, that guy was a defensive, unbelievable defensive outfielder Mm -hmm. cannon for an arm, you know, always reliable, always making the right decision. So, uh, what a career. I think he's like 300 years old too. He's he is old he as fuck, age. dude. He's old, and I just I was like that guy. When you watch him slap one down the third base line, and then you just see the third baseman take like three steps forward, and Ichiro Suzuki would already be 75 percent down the first base line. He was he was four steps out of the batter's box. By the time the ball hit the 
the dirt twice. That's how I used to play. I couldn't hit the ball past like the the very first part of the outfield, but I could get on first base before you could pick it up. You were lightning fast. Mm -hmm. Got so, really good at bunting. So you were like Willie Mays Hayes. Keep the ball on the ground. Yeah. Get use those little feet, those Name little of the legs. Game. Get down to first base. Great on base percentage. Really? Did you walk mm -hmm. a lot too? Oh yeah. Well, because the strike no zone's strike as big. Zone. And I'd crouch down a little bit. Of course you would, Ricky Henderson style. Mm -hmm. Make yourself low. I tell my the kids I coach. By the way, we are we are admired, bro. We are in the pits. My oldest son's baseball team. It's not. We are the we are the Yankees. Um, I commandeered the Jersey guy. We were going to be the Nationals. I said, can't have it, can't do it. But you're not playing well. We're not performing well at all so you got to start tom Ozoing these kids got to get in their faces you got to make them cry a little it it first of all we don't have to we don't have to get in their faces to make them cry it they're it's happening constantly we have emotional wrecks we have we have a young team i did not draft this team i taught i said i just put my son on the team you want me to coach and i will help out as best i can i'm on the road on the weekends i'm going to miss some games but i will be I'll be there at practice, and I'll be there for the games during the week, which there are plenty. And I mean, we were at we last night till not we had a game six thirty to nine, ten year olds. So it's late, but that's you know not an issue. It's cold, it's late, but still, we are we're young, and we don't have a lot of. <laughs> um, I, there's so many words running through my head right now. Uh, seasoning. Trying to be nice. Um, yeah, there's a lot where uh, we don't have we don't have a solid pitching staff, and by staff I mean really a, a person. So you're at the age of kid pitch. They're throwing. Yeah, we got mm -hmm. a catcher and there's basing stealing and this whole the whole all the operations happening except for leading off essentially. Mm -hmm. But you know it's like we got a merry go round going right now. We got walks and pass balls and steals and walk and the merry go round goes and goes and goes. And it's tough, dude. It's tough when you're out there and it's cold and you're like, fuck this. And we had an umpire. We got it. We got these umpires, dude. This umpire last night, this umpire was the umpire who was, who would be like, he was going to make an example of everyone of, of, of any situation he could possibly get his hands on. For example, like if a kid was chewing gum, it wasn't just like a, Hey, Hey, seven, nine gum out of your mouth. It was timeout, right? Walk to the middle. Both coaches come. This is the middle of like where, where people are freezing outside. And it's like, or, or like, or whatever, whatever, such like cold, windy, whatever. It's like, it's 730 at night and we don't need the pomp and circumstance of all like, hey, tell all the, so it's like, it, I just, yes. So hang on. You're not allowed to chew gum playing baseball now? The pitcher's not. Why? And certain infielders are not. As Why? Well. I, dude. Because some kid probably choked on his gum. Do you want them chewing tobacco? Is that better? Yes. Give uh, the kids tobacco. That's who we're sponsored by. You're supposed by. to teach them to Willie's chew gum. Willie's Tobacco Company. Fucking let them chew gum. That's Never why heard I told of that. him to get it out of his mouth. We're supposed to have Willie's tobacco, chewing tobacco only. They like that's sunflower insane. seeds. Yeah. So, I mean, and this guy. No is sunflower like, seeds? No, they're allowed to do sunflower okay. seeds, except in some places because, and this I'll say, the kids just spit the seeds on the ground. Nobody ever fucking cleans them up. Nobody cleans them up. Yeah. So some places are just like water only in the dugouts. No gum, no nothing. That's water so only. Lame. No Gatorade, no, no nothing. Yeah. These aren't professional ballparks, dude. I'm out there but chalking was, the lines I was myself. I chewing gum and, and spitting seeds constantly That's everywhere. The thing. This umpire. So I, the, the, I got to walk the mound out, dude. And the mound is like 500 pounds. Yeah. And it's me and whatever fucking dad I can make enough eye contact with. But it's to a guilt makeshift enough. like mound yeah because the, the fields are used for everything they're used for softball they're used okay. for so the game before us was a softball game so what is it like like plastic so it's a big plastic mound it's Ugh. like probably uh you know four feet by 10 feet and you know it's got the big hill and everything kind of like this so table it, yeah it's heavy so uh, it's me and whatever dad i can make enough eye contact with the guilt enough to be able to come <laughs> hey can you walk this thing so i'm not sliding it across the Ugh. grass by myself trying to keep it from toppling over and so we get it out there. Me and the, the volunteer dad, 
It's 7 o'clock at night because the girls' softball game went into, you know, they, they, they start a new inning. They can't start a new inning after 6.30, but they started an inning at 6.29. So by the time that, that inning ended, it was 6.50. And so we're not first pitch till 7 o'clock. I walk this thing out there. We're ready to go. I mean, I'm talking like got the kids in the field. Let's go. Like everyone, we're behind schedule. And already I can just tell this, this other team's going to blow us out. So mm-hmm. let's just get this fucking thing going. First pitch, my, my son's pa- pitching, by the way, which n- has nothing to do with this whatsoever. But, like, he's we got a couple warm-up pitches. Blah, blah. Ready to go. Stop. How far is that? He goes, get the tape measure out. <laughs> I got to walk all the way from where the dugout is all the way to, like, you know, they, they, they keep these things in the, those bins. It's like, uh, remember the movie Room yeah. where they kept Brie Larson in, like, those shipping containers? That's what they have in these fields. They have a shipping container, and that's where they just shove all the shit, all the chalk, all the stuff, jam it all in there. And, you know, the, the little machines that pitch, and then you got a lock. Every, every coach gets a lock. So I got to run all the way out to get this thing. Everyone's waiting. I measure the thing out. Just by eye, I was off by like six inches, bro. Six inches. Not good enough, Steve. It's got to yeah. be perfect. You know, the size of your arm. Yeah. And so I have to now, they want me to move. I go six inches off. He goes, all right, let's move it. I go, I got to move this thing six inches back. But I'm like, you couldn't tell you could, Like, what? What? You're you're sucking the joy out of this for not only well, the me, kids. Let me ask you this. Because they're afraid of you. But for us, dude, the volunteer coaches who are like, we, we don't, like, I I. I want to be there to help my son. I want to be there to watch him do what he wants to do and and succeed. But like, I'm not in it to fucking change everyone's lives. And and I just want to be a good person, hang out. Don't You're not fucking... trying to create future MLB yes. All Stars. You're just having a good time. This isn't Steve's baseball camp. But let me ask you this: Would you rather have an umpire that's everything to the numbers, to the book, very strict, teaching all the rules of the game precisely how they are, or would you rather have a guy that doesn't really give a shit? I'll build you like, my oh, perfect whatever. umpire because then, he, then you never know, dude. It's a fucking spin the wheel. You don't know what's showing up. Well, yeah. I got solicited by an umpire last night. As I'm walking over, he goes, there was another umpire doing this girl softball game. There was another one waiting on the side. He goes, you need an umpire for your game? I go, what is this, prostitute? I go, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure. Usually they, just, they come Pretty and they sure say they're the an umpire. App. You just type in what you want and they send them over. We had one kid that was like, he just was 17 years old. Spicoli, basically. 17. That's the other end of the spectrum. 17 years old. And he's got the gear on. And it's bases loaded. One out. And there's a pop fly to the second baseman, which, you know, in Little League, it's like, it, the ball's not going to go astronomically high, mm-hmm. but the kid drops it, and you know the bases start running around. I go, hey, what about the infield fly rule? It's an infield fly. We yeah. talked about it before the game, and the kid—you just see the kid's eyes glaze over, like what? And he's like, uh, "It wasn't a fly ball." I go, "What? What, what was it? What was it then?" He goes, "It was uh, a pop, a pop ball, pop up, pop ball." I go, "What? A what ball?" <laughs> Pop ball, <laughs> pop ball, and I'm I'm trying to keep my cool because I'm like I don't I don't want to I don't want to be the fucking guy that's out there going nuts mm-hmm. on a kid an umpire who's like getting fifty bucks to do the game but it's like we talked about this before the game you obviously forgot the rule yeah. in the moment which is okay but don't re- repeat the term pop ball to me three times because I'll be honest with you Breton. If I don't fucking try to sneak a win out, literally by doing shit like that, we might not get one. Yeah. So you haven't won a game yet? Oh, and five. Okay. We got 24 this, games on the schedule. I have, oh, and five. I've been and, on the other and side. And I'll tell you what, dude. I've seen the other... T- There's three other teams in our division, which means like they're supposed to split these four teams up amongst these kids evenly. Mm-hmm. We've lost all three of them. And not by a little. Okay? And they all have pitchers. At least one kid that's like, throw Willie out there because he can throw every other pitch a strike. Not the merry-go-round that I got going on. Yeah. And they, and they try. Say this, you guys. At that age, it's all about coaching. Go ahead. I'll tell you. It's all about... It's not, a, it's not just about coaching. 100% about coaching. It's about attitude. It's all about the attitude of the coach. 
and that will either lead them to a five and zero or an zero and five. I can deal with stuff like this. Okay, I when have been a man an umpire, on first though. and second. Have you ever right? umpired? Yes, I did it's, it for a it's summer. It's a nightmare. It is. It's a thankless job. I was, it is. I was be probably. I was probably about that kid's we age. Missed, we missed. We had a game two Saturdays ago. I was home. The umpire didn't show up, which is the other thing. You get. Brrr, oh, I've spin had that happen wheel. too. Where the umpire didn't show up. She I went to my little up. brother's game. Umpire didn't show up. So they were like, can somebody do it? And my dad was like, he'll do it. Thank goodness it was an inner inner squad game. So it was like us against the other, like I, like I said, the other th one of the other three teams that we're supposed to be equal with. So I mm -hmm. go, hey, how do you want to do this? I go, you want to call for us? We'll call for them. Great. So then they go, we'll just call. I'll call for my pitcher. You call for your pitcher. You know, when you're, I go, great. So then there are the dad didn't feel comfortable going behind the plate. I go, okay, without the gear and shit. I go, we'll do it from behind the, the, the pitcher's mouth. I'm telling you, parents still bitched and complained on the yeah, side. It's insane. Parents still, and I, I look balls and strikes. I get that. That is a very, that has been argued by the professionals since the dawn of the fucking game. Mm -hmm. But at little league, when it's when it's this, when it's when it's when you're dealing with literally the difference of a strike zone being like a, a completely different strike zone. Like there are kids strike zones that start where other kids strike zone. The next kid comes in. The top of the last kid strike zone is the bottom of this new kid strike zone. So yeah. it, it's not like major leagues where it comes in inches and you know. So, but the rules of the game and all the other bullshit that you got to deal with, the fucking personalities that. The guys that we've had, I had it. We had an umpire last year that took a phone call in the middle of the inning. In the middle of the inning, you just didn't call time. You just heard him on the phone. Heard him on the phone. So that's why he gets paid fifty bucks a game. It's a. It's just. It's. Uh. It's. It's really wearing on me. And I, I love our. Like I. Like I said, I was telling you. I don't mind. We had a situation first and second. Ground ball to the third baseman. Right. This kid picked it up, and he just fired it over to first base, right? And as soon as he did it, I said, I watched him. As soon as he let the ball out of his hand, I just saw him go, oh, shit. And that I don't mind. That I know. Okay, so we're we're we're, we're getting the gap is getting smaller. Mm -hmm. So he made the play. He made a great throw to first. We didn't get the guy out of first base because the first baseman wasn't even going near the bag because he was going to assume that it, we're not there yet for a double play. But anyway. I, as soon as he and I go that he he started like oh I'm so sorry I go hey that I don't mind that we'll work on you know step on third next time it's okay we're gonna work on that win the ball but it's the it's the ones that are like I don't even like when you say go to left field and you turn around and they're not even they don't even have a hat they don't have a hat they're eating a snack and their parents are putting a warming blanket on them yeah and I'm like what the fuck am I doing here bro you know. I'm trying to eke a win out. I'm trying to eke a win out. And we got like, you know, people that are like, oh, I don't you know what, what's happening. Umpires. It's, it's, it's been the bane of the last couple of weeks of, of my life, but. So are you going to continue to do it? Yeah. I mean, I got, I'm not going to quit, but I mean, next year you're going to, but here's the sign up again to volunteer. I don't know. Next year, it, this is like the bachelor for me all over again. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what I, I have Was to get through. Was this your first time coaching by the way? No, no. I coached. Assistant coached before previous years, but like this is the first time that we've, I've had like the lion's share of the of the responsibilities and also the more of the like I, the other guy I'm doing it with has no it doesn't have a kid on the team just as like hey I'm just here to help out so yeah a lot of the responsibility and a lot of like I didn't really put this thing together myself yeah I didn't have a lot of you know I'm like a, a, a manager. That didn't get to draft his players. You auto drafted, and now you're like, fuck. Yeah, like all I'm asking for is like, you guys got to you get. I just needed a pitcher. Give me one kid that can throw strikes. Yeah, and there, because that's it. You get a kid that can throw strikes, possibly a catcher that can ke keep the ball in front of them, and a couple kids that can hit and spray some out in the lineup and get the other ones to hit the ball in fair territory. Well, you're telling me I could put a winning team hey, together. Just let them hit the ball. Just throw it over the plate. Oh. Throw it over the yes, and I, they they can't even do that. Oh, I'm not, do you think I'm looking for location? I don't know location. I don't know your coaching. I've never watched you playoffs. Coach. You're zero and five. I'm just trying to help, bro. 
That's like a, you just the, what you just underhanded. asked. You just asked the captain of the Titanic, "What's being served for dinner? Is it going to be?" Yeah, I saw fish. I want to die with a full fish? belly. Is it swordfish or salmon? They still ate that night. And I'm I'm, sure I'm trying delicious. to keep the water off the deck, bro. Okay, and you're worried about where the location is. Yeah, where are they throwing the ball? Not not just nowhere near home right plate. Right down the middle. Right down the middle. Make the kids hit it. I I try to get him to laugh. I go. Hey, this umpire, he's breaking your chops, son. They go, yeah. He's, uh, I go, aim for his fat face. Aim it right at his fat face. Because he crouches down. The one. Mm -hmm. Go throw it at his fat face. Bust it open like a pinata. Do it. Don't throw it at the glove. Throw it through so the ball will go through Just his fat face. Them. Square up your shoulder. Right at the catcher. Yeah. Right at his head. And step 12 to 6. Yeah. I'm channeling my friend here. I'm doing the best I can. But it's it's a let them it's hit an the ball. uphill battle, Tell them, bro. Don't throw it so hard. Aim it. Yes. But here's the deal, dude. I'm try I, and then we let them hit the ball, and then other problems happen. <laughs> yeah, but those other problems are better than than. Walking. I want one win. What's the odds I get one win this year? And How I'll many games at, do you play? I think it's a 24 game schedule. So you're five in. Zero oh and five. I think we are right now. I think it's zero oh and five. You got to get one. In twenty four games, dude, I'm telling you, you have nineteen more games. You're gonna get, you're gonna get two wins. I'll tell you this. This is you're what I know for a games. fact. Here's what I know for a fact: we will not win. I know, we will not win one single game on the road. There is no way that we will go up in runs and in the bottom of an inning hold a team from scoring. The only possible way we one, are going to win: one win at home, one win on the road. Brenton, you, I, I, I love you for saying that, and I would love for you to. I'm gonna because next week uh, our guest is gonna be Jay Larson, who we trade videos of our kids playing baseball. Mm -hmm. And again, both my sons are good. My, is that my what I have son, to look forward to with my friends? Start so, having kids, and then I get. <laughs> well, no, we talk shit to each other about okay. it, forms and all this stuff. But so, uh, I, I'll show you some video. I'll send you some video, and we'll see some next week of like what we're talking about here. Mm -hmm. Certain situations of like you know not. Not other people's kids, but like our kids and stuff like that. So it's, uh, you know, you, you may have a better, a more educated opinion next week. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Of what you're looking at here. I'm going to stick with one and one. One on the road, one at home. Because sometimes we place these teams, dude. You're going to get like, that are like even, they're walking even the in like, worst teams. Even the bad news bears won a couple of remember, games. Remember um, Joe's, what was it, uh, Dodgeball, Joe's Pros or whatever the, the Ben Stiller's fucking gym yeah, was? Yeah, Average Joe's. Average, no, no, that was Vince Vaughn's. Oh, what was uh, the one that's uh, the, the, the gym? Uh, the, were they the Cobras? I don't know, but it was like Cobra Kai, like a, dude. That's what some of these teams show up like. Yeah, and they're gonna lose. They're at all some point. the same sneakers they're, on. They're gonna have bad games. Their kids. How old are they? We have two. Ten kids. years we old. Have two, we years average old? two kids for getting a hat every week. Yeah, Thurman Thomas forgot his helmet in the Super Bowl. No big deal. And this is the Yankees. We're supposed to have some sort of. You oh, know, they've they've had some off years. You got to buy a kid. Go out and buy yourself a kid. We had a kid quit. A good kid quit. I think he saw the writing on the wall. He pulled the fucking, <laughs> what's his name, from the Buffalo Bills. Yep. He was like, fuck this. Um, I'm going to give up soccer for this. Okay, well, let's shift back to baseball futures because we should put a bet down. Um, so you have, uh, for the American League, you have the Yankees winning the AL East. You have the Red Sox as a wild card. Cleveland with the Central. Houston with the West. And who's your second wild card? Oh, um, the Rays. So all three 95-plus win teams in the East. Mm -hmm. You got the, uh, the um, oh, I said the Indians. And then who did I, did, did I do the West? Uh, you said Houston's going to have gonna win the West, yeah. a big year. Yeah. So I'm going with the Yankees, the Red Sox as the wild card, Cleveland, Houston. You said the Yankees win the division? Yankees win the division. Okay. Red Sox as a wild card, mm -hmm. Cleveland, Houston, and then the Angels as the second wild card. All right. That's not a, that was a, a thought of mine as well. I think the Angels have a real good year as well, but I don't know if they can beat out. I feel like Tampa Bay. I don't just, think they're going to beat out Houston for the division, but I think no. they could beat out Tampa Bay. Um, you want to do the National League? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this puppy's dead. Bam, 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 bam. All right. So in the NL East, I think I'm going to go with the Phillies. 
Hey, did Degrom sign a contract? I heard he um, did. Um, I believe so. Let's see. Hello. Um. I like the Braves. Uh, he signed a contract extension worth one hundred and thirty-seven and a half million dollars, plus another thirty-two and a half million on the twenty twenty-four club option. He has a full no-trade clause. It's How the largest. How many years? Uh, through twenty twenty-four. So five five years, one hundred and thirty-five year million extension. Yeah. Damn, that's almost. Wow. Well. Dude, the guy is. Five year, $137.5 million deal. As of two days ago, he signed. All right. So, yeah, the Mets uh, did something. Finally. Um, yeah, I like Atlanta to win the East in the National League. But the Phillies, not, not a bad pick, though. And then in the Central, I'm going to go with the Cubs. I'm going to go with the Brewers. And um, out west, I'm going with the Rockies over the Dodgers this year. I know. Oof, I should watch myself on the tough. way home. This one's tough. I'm, I'm going to take the Dodgers, though. And then who are your wild cards? I like the Cubs in uh, Philly. I'm going to go with the Rockies and the Braves. We'll do, um, for next week's podcast with Jay, we'll do, uh, um, maybe world series winner pick and then like MVP and all that stuff, batting champion. Yeah, I'm going to put some money on whoever I pick to win. I'm going to do a little Dude. research, see how people start out. I would I would throw a hundred bucks like. each. If you had a hundred dollars each, expendable that you didn't care about on the Royals and the, and the Baltimore uh, Orioles. What the hell for a thousand dollars to one. Yeah. Let's what? do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. You want to do the Orioles? Or you want to do Kansas city? Uh, why don't we just throw it in the pot and then we'll, we'll, just split, it up. we'll split it. We'll split it up. Yeah. Dude, you, you let me tell you something right now. It would be life changing. You for me. will. You have never seen <laughs> two people get on a bandwagon so quickly as if a fucking streak starts going Go Royals, baby. Go Orioles. Go Royals. Go Orioles. Well, I mean, they said it on the show. And I got an Orioles hat it's true. and jersey because my youngest son's on the Orioles, so they got to, you know, they got to, mm -hmm. you got to buy all the fan, the fucking gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, every Saturday I got an Orioles cap on. I got the fucking jersey, the whole thing. So, I'm one step onto the bandwagon. Yeah. And as an American League East rival of the New York Yankees, that's why I can sit here and laugh about how ridiculous this is, but. It's going to be real rough if August starts rolling around and it's Yankees and Orioles fighting for a division. But it's not going to be real rough if we're looking at a, a fucking, what would that payout be? $20,000? $100? Brent? Oh, it'd be a, a $200,000? Brenton, I'm going to give you the numbers one more time. I'm going to give you a big opportunity okay, here, on. buddy. Let's end this, let's end this podcast on a high note. Hang no, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Come on, man. I'm going to pull up a calculator. Don't pull up a calculator. You, let's, use, let's use that little brain. Ready? Because we watch the show action. Mm -hmm. You know how those numbers work. Ready? I'm going to give you the Baltimore Orioles at 1,000 to 1 odds. Okay? And we're going to put $100 down on it. Mm -hmm. Now, if the Baltimore Orioles win the World Series at 1 to 1,000 to 1 odds, how much money are we going to get? $1 billion. And that's the podcast. We're going to be week, billionaires, everyone. you guys. Um, no, I'm going to be. <sighs> $100,000 is not bad. Mm -hmm. Not bad to do nothing. Yep. Not bad to do nothing. We're not the ones playing. But the cross that I carry doing this podcast with you is, is not totally nothing. Totally worth friend. it. Totally worth uh, it. I'm going to be in Buffalo this weekend, ladies and gentlemen, at the beautiful Helium Comedy Club for the 450th time. I feel like I've, I have uh, part residency in buffalo i've been there so many times jimmy pid shout out to the jimmy pid i'll see you there buddy um yeah so uh and now apparently i won't be there with the buffalo uh coach 
He'll be gone. What's whatever his name He's already was? Already down in Alabama. Uh, are you going anywhere this weekend? Or are you here? No, I'm. I'm at the comedy store this weekend, and uh, I'm prepping. I got the Comedy Central thing, so I'll be oh, cool. Making my, I don't know what uh, that is, but the Bill Burr thing that ATC is doing. Nice. So I'll, I'll Where are they doing my, at the store? No, we're shooting at uh, the Someplace. Uh, t- Telegram Ballroom. Oh, okay. In town. Thank you. Yeah. Excellent, dude. Um, Congratulations. Break a leg. Thank you. So I'll, fun. I'll tape in like three weeks. Excellent. Um, I uh, Yeah, I'm in Buffalo. Um, I'll be in um, Arlington, Virginia next weekend. So if you're in Arlington, Virginia, uh, come get tickets now because I think they're moving quick. So, uh, yeah, next week's podcast guest is Jay Larson. We'll talk more basketball. We'll see what happens in the, uh, in the brackets. Go Anteaters. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Peace. And now is when I put the thing back into here. On it. One day we'll get one of Bet these. Bet DSI, by the way. Yeah, I know. But maybe not. I'm not sure. No? <laughs> <laughs> Probably should have asked you before the Probably, podcast yeah, I mean, like, was ending. They're great always still, but maybe like not. I don't know. Like you have other anymore. options, is what we're trying to say. Yeah, say, like you might like. Yeah, it's like, but it's cool. Like, yeah, definitely they're great. Still continue they're to great. go check it out. But, but, but you look know, at all your options. Always uh, keep the door open, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> bye bye. Bye for now. Yes, but now we can bet on that too. What's the odds? Welcome back. It's insane. Welcome back to what's...